Hey everyone, it's Sean here, your guide to Warcraft, and today I'm bringing you a very special video. This is one of the new Battle for Azeroth secrets to find Baal, a new pet. So to start with, you want to head to Nazmir in Zandalar, head to this wooden bridge here, run all the way across it, you'll know it's the right one, I mean... Uh, it's pretty it stands out quite a bit and then when you get to the top I mean that stands out as well but you want to go where I am in the video you're gonna need a few goblin glider kits for this gonna warn you now if you want to get this secret video or you want to you know you want to get this pet done grab some goblin glider kits they're gonna help you out a lot so you want to head to here there's gonna be a small note and you can probably make the jump depending on you know your class or what utility you've got but I just use the glider kit much easier and much safer click the note and the note will say begin at the beginning so this ends up taking us back to the Broken Shore. This is actually where the very first Secret of Legion took place, where we had to attune ourselves to Cosmoth the Hungering, where we had to click those 10 original orbs. Quite a throwback, actually, because the item we need is going to be right on the table next to one of the Cosmoth orbs. But this item is no shiny orb. This is an ordinary pebble, but it's clickable, and when you click it, we'll pop up with a text box with the next clue in. Very interesting and very... Uh, Incredible that people actually were able to discover this. You then want to head back to Boralus, coordinates 5040, and you're going to see right in front of me is like a wall of like nets. Doesn't look like you can walk through it. That's part of the secret. You can actually walk through these and then through the floor in itself, and you can walk into a hidden cave under Boralus, and inside this cave, Right at the back is going to be another one of these weird ordinary pebbles that you can click. Should have known that Blizzard would hide some secret caves underneath a new capital city. Sounds absurd, doesn't it? At least with Cosmoth, the orbs were very, like, visual friendly. These pebbles really are the complete opposite. So, next up we're going to Zoldazar. We're going outside the Atoldazar dungeon. But we're not going inside, we're actually going into the uninstanced version. So, you want to follow where I go in the video if you are not familiar with how to get there. There's also going to be a lot more in there. This thing is going to get a bit crazy. So, you just want to follow where I'm going in the video. Go up here, around here. There is some world quests back here, so you are, you know, intended to go back here. But we are going to be going out the map a little, in a manner of speaking. But Blizzard have hit a secret there, so this is, you know, this is intended, you could say. This isn't bugging the game or doing anything naughty this is legit i guess you you could you'd call it so you want to get to about here drop down here just completely just follow where i go in the video you can always rewind if it if you get lost you want to get to here now this is where you're going to be doing your jumping so you want to jump and then as you jump lightly press forward and then you can kind of very slowly jump up this well this gap here and then go forward a bit going to do a little bit more jumping up onto here and then last one you're going to be doing this well the exact same technique up onto here this is where things are going to start getting interesting because this is kind of beyond the i guess designed area if you want to call it that so going through some shrubbery here going through here following the wall and then you're going to turn right and there's going to be like a whatever you'd call this a path going upwards and this is where we're going to need that goblin glider kit that I mentioned earlier in the video. If you have one of those, you're going to need it now. If you're a demon hunter, then you're lucked out. Because <laughs> you're going to get to about here, and it's going to become pretty evident why you're going to need one. So, you're going to get to around here. We're pretty much like off the map at this point, in a sense. Like, we're in the, like, you know, <laughs> the unintended part. So, you're going to get to here, you're going to jump off. And this is where things really get interesting. So... You're going to goblin glider around here. You know, you're going to see two trees in the mists below. You want to go to the tree. I go here. This is the taller tree. This is the one closer to where you jumped, the higher up tree. Don't go to the lower tree because you won't be able to get back up again. When you land, I do appreciate it. it is pretty dark back here. And I was doing this at nighttime in Zandalar. So the zones do get really dark. But there's going to be a small cave or a hole in the ground which leads to a cave. And yep, there's absolutely nothing cool in here except for, yeah, it's, it's a pebble. Right near the entrance if you turn left, a little pebble on the ground, a little ordinary pebble just to rub it into how hidden this place was. So this is pretty incredible. Next we're going to Drustfar, coordinates 3554. You can see we're at the top of like the waterfall on the map there. You want to jump down to the bottom of this waterfall. I used a glider just to be safe, but you can probably just land in the water and be fine. I didn't want to risk it. You want to land here and then facing you, it appears to be blocked off. Instead, if you jump up here, go up onto the left, you can actually jump behind this rock into this cave. Now, it took me a few minutes to figure out where I was looking. Um, it's actually, the ordinary pebble isn't on the ground, it's actually in the eye socket of the skull here. It's in 
the right hand side one for you or the well it's left to your right and then that's the next pebble next we're going to Voldoon we're going to the Totaka refuge here you well, this one's an interesting one you want to jump down here you want to make sure that you land here because it's impossible to get back up again you'll have to run back so then you want to jump down onto this next one you'll know it's the right one because on the left here there will be a tree sticking out if you go round to this tree You'll notice there's a bit of an opening behind the tree. You're going to want to continue down here. And there's going to be a mob down here. Don't go anywhere near it. Do not aggro it. Do not fight it. It will actually one hit you. But do not worry. The pebble is just to your left here under this rock. So as long as you don't go near that thing, you'll be safe. But it's a bit of foreshadowing for what's about to come. So we'll be seeing that guy again very soon. The next step requires us to go to Stormsong Valley right at the very top here. Like literally the very top island of the map. You want to head right here. You want to follow where I go in the video. It is quite dark. You want to head up here. Turn right. Go up again. Up this small ledge here. And inside, well, under this tree, inside these bushes, is the entrance to yet another cave. This cave actually contains just one of the regular treasures for an achievement. And some mobs guarding it. So this one is, well hidden but not too hidden as compared to the other ones once you kill the mobs you go to the back of the cave and on your left here there will be a little wagon inside that little wagon will be one of the ordinary pebbles click that and we'll have done that one the next one it's pretty cool so we're going to be going outside the map again for this one but this one you're going to need a water walking mount for you want to head to here in nazmir coordinates 5007 try to line yourself up as best as possible to where i am but you just want to head in this general direction out into open water. You need a water walking mount because you're going to be suffering from fatigue. So have a, any way of walking across water on a mount will do. So go all the way out to water. Don't worry about fatigue. You will you are guaranteed to die doing this. But as long as you know where you're going. So just keep going until you get to coordinates 5509 roughly on the map. And then when you get to this point just drop now hopefully you should be able to easily see what you're looking for underwater down here will be a well sunk colteran ship you'll know if you're in the right place because it stands out like a sore thumb down here you want to go all the way down you realize your fatigue will probably be very low i actually died once attempting to do this and then at the very back of the ship will be like a glass stained like window at the back and one of the like one of those little like dots there will be clickable and that's where one of the pebbles are and then there's no way of getting back there before you know suffering from fatigue so at that point you're going to want to just res a spirit healer because you ain't getting back there <laughs> next up we're going back to Boralus again coordinates 4279 and this is in the proud more keep there's actually going to be a maze and inside this maze you just want to follow right go left and then you want to go right here and then you want to get to this tree. You may already be familiar with this place because this is where a D&D &D easter egg is actually hidden. Behind the tree is a little trapdoor into a, a little basement. Inside you'll find some off-duty cadets playing d and I thought that was a pretty awesome reference. But down here, you want to go behind this barrel. There is another one of the ordinary pebbles. This one's very hard to see. You just got to line yourself up perfectly with it. After that one, we're going back to Drustfar, right near Whitegrove Chapel, going to the top left-hand side of the map. This is the island with the lighthouse on it. You want to jump up here and then follow this path. It's, well, it's a very sneaky path all the way around the side of the mountains until we get to this little cave here. You want to jump into this cave be careful it is quite a hard jump you don't want to fall off into the water and go all the way back but you want to head into the cave and then once you get in the cave you want to turn around and do a 180 and then you want to f walk forward a little and then the pebble will be up on this rock above you kind of hidden in the shrubbery you can click it from outside the cave but it's a lot easier to do from the inside i found you can see it a lot better next up we're going to tiragard sound we're going to kenning's lodge just up the map here now it looks harder to get to than it is you can see that down there's the flight path you just walk up here behind this little tree here will be another one of these hidden caves now this cave this cave is very unforgivable this cave is filled with invisible borrowed untrackable unkillable mobs that are going to one shot you upon contact so i tried to cheese it with nitro boots i was like ah they ain't going to get me i'm going to go all the way to the back of the cave i'm going to find the pebble and oh my god they came out the ground and they destroyed me but that's actually expected. So what you want to do then is go in as a ghost, head to where I go here. You can see the pebble just lodged behind this rock here. When you're in position, click resurrect, grab the pebble as soon as you can because these guys are going to pop up again and just kill you again. So you're, you're going to die. It's going to happen. If you can do it without dying, then 
more credit to you there. Next one is still in Tiro Guard. You want to hit to call it 8021. It's it's easier to get to here than it looks. When I looked at the map, I was like, oh god, but it's actually a lot easier than it looks. You just want to go around the long way and drop down. So you want to jump up onto this cave here, mount up. You want to then jump up on here and then follow a pathway up here. And then you want to get behind this waterfall. You can see there is a drop down area here. When you drop down, you ain't getting back up again. So enter at your own choice and then when you enter here there's going to be a room filled with pebbles it's going to be very dark and also you need to find the pebble to click it's actually right here in the corner it's actually under this scroll it is extremely dark i'm surprised if you could even see this but underneath this scroll will be the clickable pebble it's almost quite literally a needle in a haystack scenario here Next up, we are back in Boralus, but we're just off the edge of Boralus. You can see we're about at 1081, pretty much in Tiragar, but we're just on the edge of the Boralus map, just under the B. You want to head to the exact coordinates that I posted in the map there, because then you're going to be swimming straight down. I think of all the caves and all the hidden places... This is the hardest to see. This is what this one you you might you may be surprised. I was surprised because you want to just swim directly down, and you're looking for a hole underneath the seabed to find the hidden cave. And I don't even know how I did it. I'm just like holding X to go underwater further, and I just by accident completely found this hole under the water, which led into this cave. I can't explain any better how to get there other than to go to the coordinates that I posted and just swim down in a straight line and you'll find it it's it, it's honestly it's shocking <laughs> and again remember well i said needle in a haystack where they fill the room with pebbles i did it again but luckily we know it's right here just under the seaweed if your eyes are struggling to find it your mouse definitely will just keep hovering your mouse over the, the seaweed you'll get it eventually now we're moving on to the very last pebble now and this is by far my favorite and most interesting one. So to get to this one you want to head to corner 6313 in Voldoon. Now we're going to be running out a long way to see. We're going to be going roughly halfway between Zandalar and the Broken Isles to get this. Now this one will blow your mind a little. So we're going to be running all the way out roughly on this trajectory. You, If you're struggling to get the trajectory lined up to where I am in the video here. Um, look at where I am when I get to the end point and I post up the map because that might just help you line up a bit better initially but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now you might be thinking how are you going to get out that far? You did it in Nazmir and you died of fatigue quite literally. How are you going to get halfway to the Broken Isles and survive? If you look at my fatigue bar already it's going down quite quick. Obviously the footage is sped up but you know what it's going down. I'm nowhere near the Broken Isles yet. This is quite clearly going to kill me but you get to a point and your fatigue returns. You're in the middle of absolute nowhere, but your fatigue comes back. So it's like if you've hit this point and your fatigue has come back, you know you're in the right spot. When you hit this spot, just keep going in this direction. You'll know when you get to the right point because just well, follow what I do here. You're going to keep going and eventually your fatigue bar will return again. When your fatigue bar returns, that means you've gone too far. So then you want to go back again to a point where your fatigue returns at this point you want to surface underneath the water now down here you will be facing breath and fatigue again because we're going to be swimming a little further out into the fatigue area so just to help me along i use the underlight angular artifact fishing pole you can use anything to enhance swim speed you shouldn't be in too much trouble though so exactly where i am if you open up the world map you are coordinates 55 52 so that is exactly where i am you can use that as a way to help you line up your trajectory at the start and you know that that's where we are now so you're going to be swimming down into the fatigue zone you don't want to go too far deep but you just want to follow roughly where i'm going hopefully it will start to look familiar because you're going to go around the side here you don't want to go too deep just literally around the side till you see this really strange like rock formation inside this rock formation there will be a very small hole you can see there swim through that hole and you will enter a hidden cave now it's not actually in the cave you want to turn around and it's just down here in a very hidden location and i thought this was quite funny because as this is the final pebble obviously blizzard are complete trolls mostly jeremy just saying but you you swim up here i was curious what else is in the cave never at this point your fatigue has returned you're safe in the cave but you look at the cave floor and it is all pebbles 
Blizzard were like, hey, if they ever find this cave, they're going to be clicking and looking at all these individual pebbles, and really, it's not even even there. Absolute trolls. But pretty cool. This cave is very well done and very hidden. Last step, we're heading to Frostfire Ridge, coordinate 6124 in Dranor. So, this is it, the final step. You want to head to Frostfire here. There's going to be like an opening to a lava pool. And down here will be Bar, the pet that we've been going for. He will now be visible to you if you've collected all the pebbles. But there's a catch. You can't beat him in a pet battle, so you need to now summon a pet called Una from Argus. But Una has to be fully upgraded from her own quest chain, which came in patch 7.3.5. Not many people did this because it was a purely cosmetic quest chain that was discovered by the Secrets Discord and didn't really offer any reward other than story. So a lot of people don't have it, and now it actually has a nice use. You want to summon Una anywhere near Baal, and it will weaken him. She will zap him with a wand, and it will weaken him to a green quality pet that you can take out with ease. You just, like, he's no challenge. So he turns from an unbeatable legendary pet into a very weak green level pet. But obviously you need Una in order to weaken the pet. So you don't have to be the one to have Una. Maybe a friend could have Una. Anyone else that's also doing the secret with you. Someone in the area may already have Una. But you need Una to weaken the pet. So if you've not done Una or upgraded her, you're going to want to go back to Legion and do that if you want to finish this secret off. So I'm very glad I actually did it. I do have a link for Una down in the description. I actually did quite a nice video covering the events of that but because it didn't offer any reward didn't really get much traction and i don't like i said i don't think many people actually took part in that one and it's great to like have done it and now it actually feels useful but that's pretty much it so that's ball once you beat him in the pet battle you will just be given the pet and that's the end of the secret blows my mind this one i always say whenever i do a secret like this one tops it like Blizzard have gone to amazing lengths to hide this stuff, and then the WoW Secrets Discord go to even further lengths to discover it. Finding pebbles in caves in the first week of an expansion is absolutely crazy, so full credit to them, full props to them. It's amazing that they find this stuff, and amazing that Blizzard actually puts this in the game. Very happy to cover it. But that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for some more guides and videos. Links are down below. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.